When I moved back to the United States after living in France for 10 years, I got, I was surprised by the number of email jokes I got from women um, about the sexless marriage, about being relieved to be, you know, sort of not bothered by your husband. And those are jokes that just don't work in France. If you say that to a French woman and, and, and you think she's going to laugh, she'll look at you like you need to go to a psych ward. And you've worked with a lot of teens and yes, schools, totally. trying to get them to stay off steroids. It's a bummer because um, a lot of doctors are tending to give them out these days. Today, what French women know about love and sex. Deborah Olivier is here to tell us what Americans, women, and men can learn from them. Plus, fitness model Wesley Wilson helps you stay motivated in the gym when you really just want to say the hell with it. But up first, Deborah Olivier. Great to have you here today, Thank Deborah. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks, Greg. So you say there is just a basic difference in the attitude American women and French women have toward men. Yes. Well, I think it's predominantly cultural, and I think if you were to just bring it down to its common denominator, I think that French women genuinely love men. There's a lot of complicity between men and women in France. I think it's interesting that French, a very famous French feminist once said that there'll never be a battle of the sexes in France. Hmm. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to hear the same from an American feminist. Right. So I think that lays the groundwork already for a certain um, love-friendly culture, if you will. Well, for instance, um, you mentioned in the book they talk about the, the, the French opinion, of, you know, if we think of the, the French as sexy or romantic or sleeping around or whatever, right. the, the opinion of the Americans seems to be, though, that they have the sexless marriage, is that? The sexless marriage? You mean the, the opinion of the French with respect to Americans? Yeah, or that a lot of women aren't, don't really, they'd rather not have sex with their husband if they could help it. Well, that's, that, <laughs> that's a common uh, perception, I think, of the French, but I think it's also perpetuated by Americans. I think American women, uh, and I put myself in that category, I'm French by marriage, but I'm also American, there's a lot of commiseration about men. We tend to commiserate about men more than we sell celebrate them, um, and that doesn't go on in France as much. So the sexless marriage is a big celebrity in America. It's not that way in France. I think if you have a sexless marriage in France, you're not going to talk about it. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's something you're going to try and pretend is yeah, not here happening. Yeah, it's almost a, a here, joke in the... Well, when I moved back, it was interesting, when I moved back to the United States after living in France for 10 years, I got, I was surprised by the number of email jokes I got from women um, about that, about the sexless marriage, about being relieved to be, you know, sort of not bothered by your husband. And those are jokes that just don't work in France. For instance, I think you say in the book there was something like, the American woman's ideal was to get the husband to clean the house, right. and then hopefully he'd be too tired <laughs> exactly. to want to do anything right. afterward. Right, exactly. And if you say that to a French woman and, and, and you think she's going to laugh, she'll look at you like, you need to go to a psych ward or something, or, you know, go to a spa and get, get a life. It's just not, it's just a completely different culture and a completely different mindset about how to be in a marriage and how to approach uh, love in a marriage. So where do you think that comes from? I mean, you say it's cultural, but what... Why is it so different? I think part of it, it's very hard to say. I think there's many reasons. I think part of it is that France is a very old culture. You know, it's a 2,000 to 2,500 year old culture. Um, and I think it's more of a sophisticated and mature culture. I think that also, and this is a bad word, the word feminism, but I do believe that feminism, feminism has played out differently in France, and that's had an impact on how men and women relate to one another. How, how so, when you say it's played out differently? Well, and this is, a, this is really the sound bite, because this is a very big subject, and it's open to all kinds of debate and controversy, but f feminism was far less militant in France. There was a very big movement of social activism in France, and there still is, and French women are the first to walk on the streets to protest for their rights. But there wasn't the same kind of anger toward men. There wasn't this, they, they fought for equal rights and pay and so forth, but they were still able to maintain um, that complicity that I refer to toward men. And I'm not sure why in the United States there's many reasons why that wasn't the case. But feminism was angrier, more militant. Mm and sort of more anti-male. Well, and to this day, you know, going back to your theme about the differences in men and women, or, or their attitudes toward men, by the women, um, you know, a lot of times in the movies, I'll hear something at the end, they'll say like, and she discovered that she could live happily without a man. Right. You know, that's kind of like the voiceover well, of the movie. Right, you know? well, it's either that, or women saying, I'm just done with men, or it's the contrary, it's happily ever after, into the sunset. Mm. Both of them are myths. I mean, I don't think women or men can live happily without one another. I think we need one another, and that's just a basic Basic fact. It's very easy to say, oh, I'm done with men, you know, but we really never are. 
And also happily ever after, which is a myth the French do not have. I mean, the happy ending is written into our culture, and, oh. and the pursuit of happiness is written into our constitution. Right, they even don't basic have ideas of happiness right. should be different. And they don't have that there. So, um, you know, it's very, very different. And even also the, the whole approach to dating. For instance, you say they don't really have a word for dating or there, go on a date? There's no word for date. There's no concept for date. And when you talk to French people, particularly who've lived here for a long time, French expats, they're continually baffled. Like, what is a date? I don't understand. You know, French people just go out. There are no rules. French women, the whole thing about rules, dating, do's and don'ts, you know, the strategy for getting a man or woman, it just doesn't exist there. They find it absolutely ridiculous. And it creates, you know, the fact that that kind of dating dogma doesn't exist makes for a lot more freedom when you go out with somebody. There's, you're not sort of handcuffed to a kind of strategy. What you talk about when you were talking to a French woman, I think, and you... I think you kind of liked the one guy and you thought maybe she liked him too or you were trying to find out if they were dating or if they were boyfriend right. and girlfriend. Boyfriend and girlfriend. And she kept, you know, she just didn't understand what yes. you were asking or like well, number one why you were asking all these questions and, and what they were they meant. Right. But I noticed that with Americans, you know, Americans always want to know you, you, as you say, it, it, there's more gray in France. In America, right. it's very black and white. People right. want to put a label on it or right. define it. You know, right. Are you dating? Aren't you? Are you married? Are you not? Right. Are you this or you that? But in France, there's... They don't wrap it up in a little box. No. And yeah, it's much less goal oriented. We're very goal oriented. You see, my husband, uh, my soulmate, my boyfriend, you know, is this a date? What is this? It's, we're very goal oriented. We want to define things. I think I write in the book, I love this metaphor that when we grow up as little girls, we pick the petals of a flower and we're into a guy and we say, he loves me, he loves me not. You know, it's utter, it's total love, utter rejection, black or white. In France, they do the same thing, but they say, he loves me a little, a lot, passionately, madly, not at all. So there's a whole gradation, a spectrum, a spectrum of passion and possibility. And the little girls grow grow up thinking along those lines. It's not, he loves and hates me. Total love, utter disaster. And, and we Americans grow up with that, and it's, it's really, it tyrannizes us. And so, um, and so I think that's why we're going, you know, are you my boyfriend, or my husband, are you husband material, what are you? Who knows? The French woman is likely to say, who knows? We'll, f we'll figure it out. Well, We're in the experience Well, of the it, thing you know? that baffles me is I think that a lot of times Americans, even when they meet, you know, you hear people say, like, you know, what are you looking for? They're like, well, you just met him. You know, I right. mean, it could be anything. This guy, you know, it could be nothing. It could be anything. It could be something in between. But you're like, but you're going to stand there and define, well, let's get married? I mean, you know, what are you going to say? Or it's, right. it's just a one night flight. You know, I mean, it's, right. there's, people want to, there's no, you talk about mystery and surprise right. and that right. you don't always have to, even telling the truth, you know, Americans have this thing that you have to tell every deep, dark secret. Right. The French do keep some secrets yes. or have some mystery. Right. And maybe even the idea of flirtation. Right. Want to tell about the French idea of flirtation? Well, flirtation, well, that's two ideas, but the flirtation, like I say, is like the French drug of choice. It's like a civic duty. Flirtation is just so ingrained in French culture, and it's not considered a sexual advance. And, you know, if, if a man flirts with a woman, it's not, it's not, a woman's not going to be offended. She'll be flattered or just amused, and that's it. And everyone flirts. We're talking older women, you know, 80 year old woman will flirt with a 30 year old man and vice versa and that also is part of the complicity that you have in French culture and it makes for um, a much more comfortable again love happy environment if you will it's just it's it's not a threatening flirtation is not threatening in France and if you don't flirt It'll get there's you something sex, wrong with sexual you sexual harassment lawsuit at it will never yeah it will absolutely <laughs> but it won't in France it won't we will be right back with Deborah Olivier her book is what French women know And we are back with Deborah Olivier. Her book is What French Women Know About Love, Sex, and Other Matters of the Heart and Mind. I thought I'd say the whole title that time. <laughs> we were talking about flirtation before the break, right. though, and I thought I'd tell you I, I, my one story from France that I kind of experienced that firsthand, I think. Having read your book now, I understand, or uh -huh. I kind of suspected, but I thought, I walked in once in a shop on the Champs-Élysées, and um, there was kind of the stereotypical, I haven't really had many of these experiences, but I have seen the stereotypical American encounter with the French where they aren't quite hitting it off very well. Mm -hmm. And the French woman in the shop um, and the American customer were going at it. And I thought they were going to take each other's heads off. And I kind of like, whoa, what, what did I walk in the middle of somebody's <laughs> battle here? And finally, the American woman turned and walked out in a huff. And the French woman turned to me with the biggest smile you've ever seen in your life in her face. Bonjour. And she just smiled. And honestly, I would say flirting, to use right. your word. And we just went on like nothing happened. Right. And I, when I left later, I thought, well, either she doesn't like women, or I don't know what it is. But, or she well, likes guys, or I don't know what it is. <laughs> but she was just, it was a completely different, just, you know, night and day. But I could see, though, how that kind of flirtation, though, kind of under It's just lines. part of it. It's, it's woven in the fabric of the culture. But also, uh, relative to that anecdote, the French agree to disagree. They have no problem agreeing, uh, disagreeing and fighting and being very contentious 
contentious with one another and then moving off, you know, moving on. We Americans, we, we but that's value Italian, harmony. Isn't it? It's more Italian, it's more Latin for us, okay? So the American probably spent, you know, three weeks being angry at that woman, and that French woman probably just forgot about it the minute she saw you. Because the American's they, actually suing her, I she's think. Probably, <laughs> she's probably <laughs> suing her, exactly. They have no problem, you know, butting heads. And it's very off putting when you're an American because we don't do that. Yeah, we sue, exactly. <laughs> you know, we stalk you, but... But even just the basic notion of telling the truth, which we were talking right, about earlier, right. can you tell us more about the difference between... Yeah, the two cultures. Well, we're, we're a much more confessional culture, obviously. We're very into the big reveal and sharing and sharing secrets and telling all and laying all our cards on the table, you know, immediately, as quickly as possible. And the French are just the opposite. They're very discreet. They're private. You hold back. It's okay to have secrets. It's okay to even have secrets with your, with your partner. Yeah. There's a kind of a notion that it's okay to have a private life, kind of an inner life, and that sometimes it's even damaging to exactly. be too confessional. Right. And we're kind of the opposite. And uh, Well, I, mean, I think of a line from him. American movie actually where the you know, guy said like you know I had to tell you or something and the woman says well now I know yeah you know right. it's that kind Thank of a thing much. it's like well, well now I know you yeah know? some things are better left unsaid and some things need to be said but the French really know how to navigate that very well and it's and it's baffling for us it, it, that's why we perceive them sometimes as being very cold well, and on this, this unspoken secret subject, um, I think is that how they handle the stereotype is, you know, that they have more affairs right. than maybe anybody else in the world, right, more than right. Americans at least. Right. And you talk about that some in the book. Right. But is that kind of one of those unspoken secrets where kind of, I mean, the wife knows or the husband knows, but they don't really talk about mm, it or? Perhaps, probably more often than our culture, probably, because I think the French are more, um, are more, easy, they more easily accept that um, secret gardens can bloom when you've been married for an extremely long period of time. It's very hard to find sustained passion with one person over 30 years. You know, they tend to have more. It gets old. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if you want to call it realistic or, or whatever, perception of that, and they're an old culture and so forth. But, you know, the perception that they're more adulterous than American is categorically false. There have mm. been many studies, and the, the bottom line difference is that the French have fewer long term affairs, and the French have, I mean, sorry, the Americans have more short term affairs. So, as you know, everyone's doing it. It's so just the a different are more way. So, they have like a lifelong, a lifelong mistress or, mistress or yeah. lover, you know, maybe one or two, whereas Americans are more likely to have several or many one night stands. I mean, this is all, you know, these are studies, nothing, there's no empirical truth here. But the fact that we perceive the French as being adulterous is simply we're just perceiving the French inaccurately. And, and we Americans are slightly hypocritical about sex when it comes to those sorts of issues. And generally, the biggest moral pontificators are the ones who do get caught with their pants down in America, so, you know. Well, and you even <laughs> say that the French say that too, that if it looks yes. too good to be true, then it probably is. It probably is not true, <laughs> yeah. Well, another stereotype about the French, I think you, you talk about the Americans discussing when someone has a French girlfriend, and like, oh, French, you know. Or we were, when we were talking on the phone earlier, you know, the British will say, I'm not French. Right. But the idea being, though, that there's some kind of sexiness, though, you know, that maybe Americans or, you know, other people in general don't have, where does right. that come from and what, what's well, the attitude? I, th I think the know? attitude, I think there's a couple of things. First of all, I think French women grow up uh, not giving a damn. They don't care if, it, if people like them. They don't want to be like other people. They don't believe in rules. They really truly are hardwired to sort of be themselves. And they reject notions of packaged beauty and so forth. So there is a certain inherent freedom that French women are sort of are, grow up with that we don't have uh, for several reasons and uh, cultural reasons. So I think if you put all that together, that makes them seem sexy. They're freer. It's also a much more sensual culture. Mm. They grow up. There's not a lot of shame about the body and sex in French culture like there is here. So all that put, if you put that all together, you have kind of a, you know, a, a people who are just more comfortable with their bodies, with sexuality, and it looks sexy to us. We have a lot more hang-ups. And you talk about, too, that there's almost like a, an animal relationship between food and sex, both. It's yeah. more of an instinctual kind of thing. Yeah, yes. Yes, so the French are very into food, and, and I don't know any French person who doesn't have a, 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 a country home where they're actually growing a garden and pulling, you know, the food out of the ground and eating it even with the dirt on it. There's a very sensual relationship to food. They went green years ago. They went green years ago, and they've always been green. And um, we are very, very removed from that. We have a very, I mean, our relationship to food, if you look at, if you look at television, I mean, food and cooking is an extreme sport in America. Really, it's there's no sensuality woven into food. I mean, there is, there are, you know, gourmands in America, but not really. It's the way a reality competition show in it's which pretty much somebody dies. Probably somebody has to die. You know, death by you know, I don't know, cutting knife or whatever. Yeah, it's very different there, and and there is a lot of sensuality with food, and, and food is wrapped up in pleasure, and that's what dating. If you go on a date, you're going to eat or have food, but it's not going to be a quote date. It's just going out. 
And yet you say the French women managed to stay thin, despite the fact that it's such a food-based culture. Right. Well, I have my theory, which is that the French grow up in, in absolute anxiety and fear of being fat. It's categorically not okay to be in fra fat in France. Because there they'll just tell you. They will sit, the minute you gain half an ounce of fat, they will tell you immediately that you look like a blimp. You know, they're very, very, no, but they're very critical, and they're very, and every, any French woman will tell you this from the time they're little girls. The minute they gain a little bit of weight, there's an immediate social commentary about it. So the French, while they do eat with pleasure and in moderation, and they don't snack and they eat healthier than we are, there is a lot of anxiety about being overweight. Mm. It's an aesthetic issue, and it's very hardwired into French culture. Unlike here, where it's okay to, you know, be plus size and big babes and mm. whatever. Fat is beautiful. Fat is beautiful, that. and there's Weight Watchers, and it's okay to belong. That and then there, it's it's really kind of not okay. Well, we're almost out of time, but one thing I'm wondering is, you know, since you've written this book and, and lived in both cultures, you say you're not exactly a Francophile. No. But yet, obviously, so, so what have you learned out of this, or what have you gotten out of your comparison? Are, are they, you know, are they doing everything better than we are? Are no. we doing some things better? No, I mean, no, and that's, one, that's the one peril in writing a book like this, is that, it, you know, you're sort of exalting French women, and you could be perceived as dissing, dissing American women, and that's not at all the objective of the book. It's just looking at how a culture looks at love and sex and matters of the heart and mind differently. And, uh, you know, there's a lot one can say about the French that's unflattering. And having lived there for, you know, over 10 years and married to a French person for over 15, you know, they're not perfect, and there's a lot of things to love and hate about them. But there's a lot we can learn looking at their culture and how they approach things like love and sex that we as a kind of love-obsessed but love-sick culture might want to learn. Well, thank you very much, Deborah thank Olivier. You. The book is What French Women Know. We'll be right back. And we are back. Joining me now is Wesley Wilson, a fitness model and aspiring actor from Santa Barbara. Great to have you Great. here today. Thanks for having me. So did you learn anything from that last segment? I totally did. I <laughs> didn't know any of that stuff. Do you want to go to France now? Is I, that... Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're, well, I guess you'll, you'll find out. Have you, have you ever been? I have not. Okay. Actually, I've never traveled out of the United States, so. Well, so up in Santa Barbara, even though you were only 19 years old, yes, sir. you have your own gym. I do, and it's uh, based out of Santa Barbara, but we're doing a lot of stuff nationwide, helping people. So it's great, it's a great base, and um, a lot of people are doing it, and getting people in shape is what I love to do, so. And you're also the lead trainer for On Display Men? On Display Trainers, yes. And uh, we're providing basically consultations online, getting people healthy. And That's people really taking off these days, isn't it? More it is, doing totally. It online because, I mean, if you want to train with a great trainer, we have tons of, you know, Max Winston and tons of oh. great fitness models on there. Max is a great guy. He's been on the show several times. Yeah, totally. And um, so we do a lot of health quest history questionnaires and stuff like that, getting things going. And go through, and they basically ask questions as far as, you know, what they want to do, what their fitness goals are, and we answer those questions for them. What, what's the most common question people want to know. How do I lose the belly? How do I get abs? Everybody wants abs. So. How do you lose the belly? How do you get abs? Um, key is nutrition and tell people right away and then cardios. That's the two main things you want for abs because obviously you got your muscle, fat's right on top. You got to burn that fat off in order to see the muscle. And how much cardio do you recommend? In I would recommend at least three times a week and uh, keep your nutrition 95% of the time clean. So. Well, I found it interesting that you, you kind of work with an ex uh, extreme age range of people because yes. on the one hand, you work with a lot of teens and yes, schools totally. and I think trying to get them to stay off steroids, is that a yes. lot of it? Or? Um, I was working with uh, Mo Hayes, which is actually the sixth ranked uh, natural bodybuilder in the world currently. Oh. And uh, we've been doing uh, natural seminars, bodybuilding seminars. Mm -hmm. uh, we did one actually a couple months ago for Boys and Girls Club. And it's really, as a teen, as I remember growing up, and I still am a teen, and uh, Steroid use, you know, as you went into bodybuilding, like you want to see results right away. Yep. And, uh, That's been a recurring theme on the show, by the totally, way. Yeah. And so many people have told me basically that like everybody's using it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's you know it's you can totally get there natural, and that's what basically we explain to kids, hmm. get them there the natural way. Do you hear a lot of interest from it though in kids? Meaning like you know, can totally. you get me some. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, yeah, I've had a few kids ask, where can I get them? And it's a bummer because um, a lot of doctors are tending to give them out these days, which is not good. And um, so and how old are these kids, by the way, that you're working with? Usually 16, 17, 16. yeah. So, so what do you say to the 16-year-old who says, can you get I basically, I take them under my wing because obviously I don't want them to go down that road. So uh, I basically, I take them under my wing and I explain to them how they can do it the natural way. And there's so much, you know, better things they can do besides steroids. Now, you started working out at a pretty young age, well, you're still young, yeah. but at a pretty young age. <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. 14, Yeah, 14 years old. But I, I've heard you can start out working, working out, 
too young, or you can hurt you, your you development. Can. You or can. You can actually, because your bone structure is not as it's not as firm. I would say, hmm. and um, you can that actually stunt your growth. It's a not, it's a myth proven true. So, so what kinds of things do you? I mean, you just I guess you just you want to stay away or from or a lot of heavy training, mm -hmm. um, obviously, and um, stuff like that. So when I work with teams, I really I necessarily get them into a higher rep range, mm -hmm. so that they're working mostly the muscle and not putting a lot of strains on their joints and bones. Well, on the, so I mentioned extremes. So on the other hand, you also work with a 94-year-old woman. Though. I do. I do. And she's doing great. Blown away. She came into my office about three months ago. And at first I was like, I don't know if I was kind of nervous, you know, because she's 94 years old. I was, like, you know, really delicate. But the thing about Fran is that actually she's dropped 10 points on her blood pressure, which wow. is great. great. So at that age, that's really what you want to focus on is cardiovascular and mm -hmm. making sure the heart's working well. So is that mostly what she does then is cardio? Exactly. Or? The cardio's working different stepping, um, resistance bands, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Weights, we stay away from a lot of that, obviously. Cause I, was I thought you were going to tell me she benches more than oh, yeah. I do. She, and benches, I was gonna be <laughs> she benches 300 pounds. <laughs> Completely yeah. off stage, you know. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's actually, we have a joke when she always comes in, I say, uh, Fran, are you ready to bench 300 pounds today? And she, <laughs> she obviously, she doesn't One day she will. Yeah, and then there you, you go. <laughs> you won't say that again, will you? Totally. So, yeah. But no, I think it's great, though, that, um, because, but well, we were even talking the other segment about, you know, if Americans are eating and the way the French stay thin, but it's not totally. quite as, you know, our culture goes the other extreme. So it's great to know that somebody who's 94 years old is still interested in working she's, out. Yeah, she's in still shape at it. And It's great. Very excited to have her. I think of what, I went on a trip to Switzerland last year and somebody told me that, well, one of the guidebooks actually said, you know, like you'll see the Swiss grandmothers carrying pails of milk up and down the sides of the mountains. Yeah. You know, again, like a 94 years old. Yeah, so totally. It's good to know at least one American yeah, is totally. doing that. And I think the worst thing for an older person to do is stay sedentary <laughs> and just not do anything. So it's great that she's coming in because she's getting the blood moving in her body and keeping herself healthy. Well, I think physically and mentally both. Yeah, totally. You know, totally. there have been studies that show that every, even it can, you know, probably help ward off things like Alzheimer's. Exactly. And you know certainly, totally. and that really bothers me too. I, I think that would be my greatest fear would be like sitting around a nursing home someday. Yeah. But I think of friends of our families when we were growing up who we'd go to visit and we'd want to take her someplace and she'd say, "Oh, kids, I'm a little old lady. I can't yeah, do that." You exactly. Know? So at least she's not a little she's, old lady. You know, know what? She's like, "Let's do it." She does anything I tell her. Obviously, I'm gonna you know tell her what to do right. But she's just like, "Okay, let's do it." She's ready to go. So. Well, since you can keep the 94-year-old woman motivated, I figure you know something about motivation. Yes. So you talk about the fact that you know if you've been working out all week. You give it 100% and mm -hmm. you get on the scale and like you've lost a pound. Exactly. That can be very demoralizing. It's very demoralizing. And one thing I work with my clients is to say don't focus on the scale. Obviously, body fat calibration is going to be the best as far as looking at your goal and your, basically how you're doing as far as your results. Um, the scale is very deceiving because you could have gained three pounds of muscle, lost mm -hmm. three pounds of fat, and you're kind of at the same place. So I like that way of thinking. Exactly. <laughs> so I tell people, don't worry about the scale next week. Let's do body fat calibrations. And most of the time, the body fat goes down, unless, obviously, they don't have good nutrition. They're not doing their carbs. And what if it doesn't? I mean, how do you keep people motivated then? Because you think, oh, why is it even worth it? Yeah, I'm putting all this effort in, and I'm totally. not getting anywhere. I mean, the science behind it, if you're doing everything right, you're going to see results. Um, we basically calculate it down. So if somebody has like a thyroid problem, obviously, that's going to be a big problem with losing weight, as you know, thyroid. So I really work with them and we figure out the solution to whatever their problem is with their goals. And I, I noticed in your blog you made an observation that actually I think probably applies in a lot of things in yeah. life, but you make them keep a food journal and when yeah. they know that you're watching them, exactly. they have a tendency to... Exactly. It's, it's funny. The first session I say, okay, take this home. It's a log. And they log everything that they eat in a 24-hour period. I don't tell them I eat right yet. So they come back and they, you know, this don't eat breakfast. They eat lunch and then a the huge dinner, which is totally throwing off their metabolism. So I scratch that off and we completely, you know, plan it out exactly what they need to do. Sometimes go to the grocery store with them and help them out and pick things right. Well, thank you very much, Wesley Wilson. Right on, Good Greg. luck with your acting and modeling. Appreciate it. Totally. The old age of 19. Yeah, I'm pretty old. <laughs> I'd also like to thank. Deborah Olivier, her book is What French Women Know About Love, Sex, and Other Matters of the Heart and Soul. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.